this is this map is settles as still water I feel like there's supposed to be another as like settles as still as water but no it's just settles as still water and let's only show my perspective but you will see his units because some of you do want to watch what happens uh, like what my opponent is doing and maybe I can uh, agree or disagree with his movements so I actually used Kant buys opening prep for this map of getting a day three recon to stop the comm tower while also immediately sending an infantry up to get, grab my own comm tower so I feel like that opening really helped me control the early game and I'm not used to skipping my turn one property captures it goes against some of the basic rules but I suppose if it's worth it I mean rules are never meant to be strict it's supposed to be a guidelines to help beginners like understand what is like what is most optimal most of the time but in this case you want your infantry up here as soon as possible because the day three recon will ha start harassing it and you would be down so much income and my opponent didn't go ferry more infantry to the to his comm tower corner he did go for a day three recon but it's not at the best base I would say uh, the base I use is the one that can reach the comm tower as soon as possible whereas this one might take an extra turn simply because he has to go all the way around the ocean tiles all right so I bring another two infantry so I can capture these properties and not uh, and not be denied them. All right, and he gets ready to ferry more infantry. I get ready to go for my comm tower. I I know if I don't get the comm tower right now, I would probably not get it ever. So I might as well, like after this property, I will go for a comp tower. Uh, I might even skip the property against a, play, a better player because they might, uh, because I don't know, they might be, they should be able to interrupt this if I skip the property because it took me one turn, two turns to reach here and that means I could I already have vision on his comp tower I see it's not being capped so I thought okay I can stop him from doing so but if you if I can see his comp tower theoretically he can also see my comp tower if I start capping it next turn so maybe against a better player I should just skip this property and capture this comp tower so I can make sure I have it but uh, it worked out for me this game so therefore I didn't learn anything I go for my comm tower I captured these two properties and I check to make sure that there's nothing in this forest uh, though I should have known there is actually nothing in this forest because I haven't reached it here yet and that's the fastest a Raycon can go so like if I can't reach it reach this location just yet then he probably didn't reach my location yet I should start thinking like that and I take a shot at his infantry I see that these two properties are not captured yet so this black boat hasn't ferried it as quickly as I have but like after these three infantry there really isn't much need for more infantry because they will all just get shot down by recons and just like 
that opening prep of using this transport copter I was like oh, this, I, I knew transport copters can be boosted but to you to boost infantry with the transport copter and then use that boosted infantry to boost again with this black boat I, my mind was like I know you can do this but I never thought to actually do it like that Uh, I considered sitting on the comm tower to make sure he doesn't get it, but because I see this property isn't captured, and I see that his infantry hasn't exactly moved up to capture it, I I think his the comm tower was safe to ignore for now since he's not getting it yet. And I instead moved my Raycon, getting that extra infantry boost here, and I instead used my Raycons to uh, spot his infantry and shoot it. Now this infantry can't really do anything other than distract my Raycon for one more turn. I also moved my infantry in the forest. Uh, I considered picking up my infantry and moving it elsewhere, maybe like over here so I can capture this property and then send this one up here. Uh, but I got these two properties and I don't need to lose my infantry over it. I'd rather uh, preserve my number and slow down his infantry when it inevitably arrives at my comm tower. At least that's the plan. Right. I also built my first tank and I'm going to start sending it to the comm tower to better secure it. Of course I'm going to capture his property. I sent my first recon uh, to spot the comm tower just to make sure he's still not capping it before deciding to send my second recon to finish off that 1 HP infantry. Right, and this is where the transport copter boost comes in. I drop my infantry here, use it to boost this infantry forward, and that last infantry uh, uh, can just go underneath and capture this property next turn. So because this transport copter is boosting these infantry, the, and the way it's boosted, these infantry can now walk into that black boat and get boosted by another tile. So that's that infantry, my infantry speeding up towards the center to get me even more income. All right. Uh, I actually did spot his a recon move across. I think. Like, I think, I know I spotted his Raycon sometime, I think it was last turn when I spotted it here, and I decided he's probably in the forest, so I can capture this safely since he wouldn't have vision on it. At least that's what I would think, and it just turns out to be the case. And I start building more vehicles to further support this comm tower. I know tanks and battlecopters would eventually arrive, or a player could do that if they wanted to. I started with a tank first because battlecopters aren't going to hurt my recons all that much, but I do, so I prefer to have a counter to a tank first, and then a counter to a battlecopter afterwards. And. Alright, instead of sending a tank left, he sends the tank uh, towards the center, which I suppose that's fair. I mean, there's not really, what, what can a tank really do that the recon can't do? Right. Getting that free infantry boost for an e one tile further. I send my recon up here to spot what he's building. And I move my tank in position. I probably should have moved my vehicles first so they can be further ahead. Uh, I think that would have been better since if my infantry was over here instead and my tank was over here, my tank will be able to respond more quickly 
And this infantry will be in the movement tile to get a furry boost from this transport copter and then get a furry boost from this black boat, which will give it back the extra two tiles it lost so it would lose over here. Alright, but I captured this property. The recon can't isn't really going to do much anymore. Drop off my infantry in this forest for vision. And I built a battle copter because I like battle copters. Uh, I mean, Andy is a soft counter to Drake, but if you if you think of Andy only as healing after Drake does its damage, Drake would I would think Drake is strong better like that. But what Andy has over Drake for sure is that his, Andy's battle copters are stronger than Drake battle copters. And and these bombers aren't going to get one shot by Drake bo uh, fighters, so I do intend to uh, invest in air units quite a bit. I probably should have pulled my recon back, but I wanted Vision to see how it was over here, and maybe I thought I could maybe try to harass some infantry some more, but he got two tanks here, and I see it a little too late. He started capping the comm tower, so I interrupt. I completely interrupt. And my anti-air is in range to defend my tank if the battlecopter so chooses to attack my tank. Battlecopters don't really do much damage to recons, so it is per I'm perfectly fine that my recon is not protected by the anti-air just yet. I pick up my infantry and decide to well, I think I picked up my infantry and decided to pull it back. Simply because, what is my infantry going to do up here? It's not going to capture anymore. But I probably should have uh, kept some infantry here to slow down my opponent capturing these properties. But I thought it's fine since I'm capturing the properties over here. So we would just swap it. He attacks my recon. Okay, I'm fine with that. He kills off my recon. And now I have to make a choice for my infantry here. Do I capture it and get income for a little bit longer? For just a little bit? Or do I uh, retreat and save the infantry? I chose to capture because I saw he was capturing and I... I say I don't want to be behind in income, but I probably should have realized that from all the recon harassments I've done here that I would be ahead in the income. And I am, like, I'm ahead pretty far. I knock out the infantry. Now both my recon and my tank is protected by the anti-air. And I bring even more vehicles uh, to the right. Oops. It's a little bit of a bottleneck since I'm having all three bases walk through one little bridge here. So after thinking it was like a bottleneck, I decide to send some infantry up here just to protect my comm tower. I see the tank has moved in here, destroyed my uh, recon completely, which Okay, I suppose my vision is pretty, uh, the lack of vision is harming me a bit. I don't exactly know, uh, I decided to scout with my tank first and see that he has blocked off his battlecopter. So I decided to just shift my anti-air over here. I think it would have been better to uh, shoot at this. No, it wouldn't have. Uh, I didn't want to risk another tank in the f in the fog coming down and destroying my anti-air. That would be pretty bad. So that's why I didn't go shoot at an infantry. I didn't want to waste my anti-air on some infantry. All right, but I drop off some more infantry to like start protecting my properties. I get my infantry in position to defend the comm tower, and I build a fighter. 
I think the preemptive fighter is probably a bad thing, actually. Uh, the fighters aren't exactly the best, especially if they don't have anything to shoot at, worthwhile to shoot at. So, and it's, so it is a bit of wasted funds now that I think about it. I probably should have went for a bomber first, and then went with a fighter to make to a to make it harder for Drake's fighter to ever damage my bomber. Or maybe just more Battlecopters, because Battlecopter spam. But uh, he's starting to pass in the center, so I decide to fight back. I couldn't quite kill it with the... Yeah, I couldn't quite kill this infantry. I wanted to, uh, perhaps maybe I could trap this infantry completely. Well, trap the tank completely, I mean, like just surround it with my infantry. But either way, this infantry would uh, be able to break my infantry out, so it didn't really matter. But still. And I decide to try to keep my tank alive here by hiding it in the forest. Uh, but this tank can be spotted because I wasn't quite able to kill off this infantry, and then this 3 HP tank could finish it off. I realize this transport copter isn't really boosting much anymore, so I decide to uh, drop more infantry forward just to solidify my pressure up here in the center. And I think this is a... Uh, I see he's capturing my comm tower. This is when I start thinking, okay, I need to start actually sending units towards my comm tower. I shouldn't just leave uh, naked infantry up there. And I decide to go in to take a few shots and drop more infantry just to uh, do whatever I can to slow down his capture. Uh, he used Tsunami here. I don't exactly know why. Maybe he felt that if he doesn't apply pressure right now, he will lose. Or he just wanted to make sure I don't get the counter. That's a fair reason as well. And he kills much of my infantry before I can heal them. On the bright side, that does mean I slow down the comm tower from being captured a little bit longer. But I am losing quite a bit of infantry up there. I am... But it's my turn, and I decide he uses his power. I'm going to use my power to offset most of the damage. Well, I take a shot first that I don't need a power for to get a little bit more charge. I don't need a power to kill that either, to, so I kill it to get a little more charge. I check to make sure nothing's in the forest. And, I, and then I use Hyper Repair. I was hoping for a luck roll here, didn't get it, unfortunately. And I just start picking off his undefended infantry. Maybe this is a little too ambitious. Perhaps it's a little too ambitious to go for this, but I decided he's going to start capturing my property soon. I need to start capturing his properties quickly. And I decide to finally start sending support to the left, to my left, to the left side. I focus on the healthier infantry first to uh, soften it up, make sure that they will take an incredibly long time to capture. But I know that he has healthy infantry further along. Stealths are allowed on this map, just saying. So that's why I built a fighter. But come to think of it, my opponent is playing Drake, so I should have expected. I shouldn't really expect a stealth. All right, he interrupts my capture, which eh, I see that he can definitely interrupt it. 
and he finishes off my the rest of my infantry here. These low HP infantry, uh, they they can't capture, but they can still block off uh, enemy units from first striking his vehicles. So they're not uh, they're not they're not removed from the game yet. They can still be useful. And this is when my I know my opponent is ahead of me on the income. This property here, the fact that he has both of these properties, I mean, I was able to uh, offset it because of the opening prep, but as of right now, he does still have more properties than me. Just, just block off his tank. Yeah. What's the tank gonna do? And I decide to just uh, charge in forward pick off some of the infantry and then I look at the fuel of my units they're all incredibly low fuel 10, 10 fuel left 17 left 15 left as much as I want to keep picking off infantry I know I it would they would just get stranded eventually so I have to uh, pull them back even built an APC here to make sure I can resupply at the front line And now I'm getting a pretty decently sized force over here to retake uh, to retake the top area. Probably should have gotten more infantry because if I'm only sending one infantry, they just need to focus that infantry. Hello, Archaic. Yes, APC in versus Moda. Yeah, I'm playing against Drake. So... Uh, I am playing against Drake, so the fuel problem is actually a problem here. Like, this tank only has 17 fuel, this tank has 15, this anti-air has 10 fuel. Uh, I'm just, in the, uh, it's a little, yeah, I know, but I'm playing Andy, so I partially soft counter it. Uh, I could turn off my opponent's units. So that you can't actually see what's in the fog, but for viewing, for replay purposes, I'm turning it on so you see what's going on behind it. Oh, Andy is good, but uh, it is believed that Drake does have a slight advantage over Andy on this map. But I really just wanted to... I picked Andy because I wanted to go to play as Drake, but I realized Drake mirrors are uh, a little slow on this. Uh, like a, a little slow like there's they're just going to stall each other out but if i pick andy i wanted some practice with andy against drake yeah exactly i don't like drake versus drake i wanted to go andy against drake so i can practice andy versus drake like i heard andy is a soft power to uh, counter to drake but i haven't actually done it in practice nor have i really do i really know the theory as to why so I decide to uh, pick Andy here, hoping my opponent picks Drake, and I, I don't agree with battleships on this map. Uh, my opponent does build a battleship later, and you'll see how easy it is for me to counter it. Battleships in PvP are typically not uh, viable unless on very specific maps. Still... I suppose with a battleship, it does help him control this entire area down here, so it's not bad. I just think uh, it's too easily countered on this map. All right, he does have 3,000 more income than me, but I'm hoping that I'm able to uh, capture these properties to gain back my income. And I see lots of vehicles over here as he's picking off my infantry. So, I know his focus is in the center right now. And... Alright, I continue picking off his units. I even... Alright, here's a mistake I did. Uh, here's a mistake I did. Comp towers give an extra 10% attack to all your units. And here I am attacking a Drake Black Boat before capturing the comp tower. So, uh... I could have killed it this turn, but I didn't. Oh yeah, Drake's air units are worse. It's minus 20% attack. 
but uh, air units are just so strong on this map because they can fly over the water and just uh, completely evade anti-air by like you can't get you can't chase an anti-air you can't chase a battlecopter over the ocean. Yeah, twenty percent is a serious debuff, but if you get a comm tower to get plus ten percent, it's only a minus ten percent damage overall. And so Drake battlecopters aren't that bad, but you do feel it a little bit when you when you take on a like opposing tanks. Oh, one thing I do have against Drake though is that Drake fighters can't one shot my bombers if I don't let him have a comm tower. So I plan to just uh, if he does build a fighter and shoot at my bomber, I'll just heal the fighter back up with my super. <laughs> lander, there is actually a, a lander rush opening where you, you save up for a lander to quickly start ferrying uh, vehicles up here. But I went with the transport copter opening instead where I started with a transport copter to boost infantry on my right side. Okay, and I am a little annoyed that this black boat survived only because I didn't capture the comm tower first. But he now captured the comm tower, so all his units get a plus 10% damage. Uh, yeah, you better run. Okay. And he's still attacking in the center trying to take these properties, so... He's very. I think this is a little bit of overextension. I don't. I never really anticipated I would ever go capture this part of the map. So for him to start capturing here, I think it's. I have to attack. It's now or never. Because. Yeah, I mean to be fair, I have been reinforcing this side, so that left my center a little bit weak. But now I'm starting to reinforce the center again. I saw a medium tank walk in, so I'm building a medium tank on my own. Yeah. All right, take out the anti-air. You don't. I don't like his anti-air, so I take it out, and then I send my fighter in. I assume he has no more anti-air, so I thought, eh, nothing can shoot down my fighter. I'll just send it in and get a battle, a bomb, uh, not a battlecopter for free, basically. I shoot down the black boat, and I'm sending my tanks back to start refueling because this tank only has 11 fuel left. There are so many blinking fuel signs over here again. And I send my battlecopter and my infantry here. Uh, I, I think my reasoning was, I know I made there. He might have a tank here, and I don't want his tank to first strike my tank on this property. So I just put a transport copter right here to block the path and maybe give me some more vision. I, uh, because I also took out his anti-air, I thought now is the time I send my battle copters left. This one only has 8 fuel left by the way. Uh, it's not really that scary. He doesn't have any vision here so he can't exactly see me. So I... Besides, I'm uh, I'm only here for this property. I don't ex I don't expect to take this one, so I plan to retreat after that. I see that he's retreating, so I press forward. I I saw his artillery walk in, so I make sure I stay just out of range of that artillery, and it also allows my backup units to pa to arrive. So now I have like four tanks, two battlecopters, one anti-air, and one recon. Recon just here for the vision. And I'm going to like storm this area and take my comm tower back. Oh, you, you planning to join Advance Wars by web? Uh, oh, oh, you mean you want to try the, your new cable, okay. But if you do want to join Advance Wars by web, I could also mentor, like I have mentored another player. He captures one of my properties, but I think this is just a temporary thing because the, the, these properties are closer to my base than it is his base, and I do intend to take it back. 
I see his uh, artillery walk in this forest, so I keep it in mind. He knocks out my anti-air, but he doesn't have any air units, so I don't think that was actually anything. Okay, uh, I will give you some... I, I can mentor you if you like. Yeah, the AI does teach a lot of bad habits in this game. Alright, he built a battleship. Here's the battleship, the Drake battleship right here. Fortunately, I already captured uh, this property, but this this battleship right now is covering this property, so there's no way I'm capturing this anytime soon. Yeah, they do. Alright, first things first. I, shot, I shoot this infantry, but I also spot that artillery at the same time. I used my units in the back first, because this tank can only go as far as this tile, so I might as well use this tank first. This way, my tank a little closer can reach the recon. Boom, one-shots it. Well, it's not one-shot, the recon was damaged, but I shoot it. And now my battlecopter reaches that artillery. Yeah, uh, the AI does teach a lot of bad habits. Uh, taking on real players, uh, you really see how weak the AI is later on. Okay, but uh, yeah, I used the recon first to get vision. I realized his anti-air can't reach my battlecopter from this position, so my my battlecopter is safe. And now I just pick off his infantry. I don't remember exactly why I moved my artillery here. You know what? Uh, artillery gambit. It's cheaper than the rest of my army. If he takes down my artillery, so be it. I can get first strike on his vehicles if he shoots my artillery. Alright, I take two nice shots at the medium tank. I resupply my battlecopters. <laughs> and... I get some pretty nice shots with my artillery. Even if I'm not defending it, it's fine, because if they shoot at my artillery, they're not shooting at my more important units that are the direct attack vehicles. And I decided to do a little something with a lot of... with my infantry. I do have one infantry right here. And... This is why the infantry spam is the, currently the meta. You can do all sorts of fun things like, here I just trapped his medium tank. Like, his medium tank is blocked my, by my battlecopter and my infantry. It's blocked by my black boat on the HQ. So, he could kill off this infantry, but by doing so, two of his units has to be attacking my infantry to free his medium tank. And those two units are dead, if they do because he will have to move them in range of me. Uh, did I accidentally click next turn? Oh, yes, I... No, no, I think it's good. Alright, he knocks out my uh, artillery, which was a little sad. He uses Typhoon. And I, I'll, I'll just like let the animation play out. Knocks out my uh, artillery over here, kills off my infantry over here, but he's leaving a lot of tanks here, tanks in range of my tanks. I think this, oh, he, he artillery struck and then used a the tank to destroy it, but uh, I'm still confident I can win in this area. At the very least, I could... I could pick off some more infantry, and my infantry here is still healthy enough to start capturing that comm tower. Okay, let's speed this up a little. And now I use my superpower to heal everyone right back. Dead units don't heal, but I get that extra plus one movement and 20% firepower. Well, 10%, uh, the 20% comes from the 
vanilla 10% for using a power. I send both my battle copters to attack his medium tank. I have... For whatever reason, I don't know why he moved his anti-air down here. Maybe he's scared that my tanks would kill it. But now he... Uh, because of this move right here, he can't actually reach my battle copter, so my battle copters are still alive. Alright, move my recon in for vision. Boom, one shots. Kill off that other tank. Start getting nice hits. Battle copter, his medium tank. Oh, maybe he wanted to move his anti-air to uh, deal with my air units down here. And I decided I don't like that transport. I'm going to get rid of it. Because I didn't think, I, I wouldn't think he has an anti-air nearby. Uh, so that was a risk I took, but it worked out. So uh, I didn't learn anything from uh, being greedy. As long as I'm not punished, I don't learn anything. That's how it works. So my recon gets shot here. And I don't see an artillery in my vision. Which means the only place that the rocket could have shot my recon from is this forest. That's the only spot that it has the range to. He sends the anti-air to attack my infantry. But that just means that I suppose his anti-air can reach his medium tank. So that's why he felt it was safe to do so. But... Uh, I wouldn't use anti-air on infantry, and you'll see why next turn. Did he base skip? Uh, yeah, he base skipped. Okay. Well, I go in anyway, uh, spot his stuff, destroy the medium tank, or just my battle copters, Attack this artillery, I got a nice hit on that rocket. And I kill off his infantry there, so there's nothing that can interrupt my capture. And then I move my infantry to block his anti-air. Uh, his anti-air will have to go around, and because of this forest, it won't be able to reach my battlecopters. So, infantry. It, uh, it doesn't do a lot of damage itself, but it has very, it's very useful. Alright, I decide to go all out over here. I see that he now has a... I didn't realize this before, but I should have expected he has an anti-air. Main reason why I chose to send my air units here is because battleships can't hit air units. So I thought I'd uh, send my battlecopters over. And I build a stealth, because why not? If he has a fighter to attack my uh, my bomber, I might as well use a stealth as well. I mean, I have two fighters right now. I, I will win the air war. Alright, let's continue. Resupply everything because, you know, I, st I still think this is his only anti-air in this area, so I go off and finish that rocket. I spot his infantry by capturing the city, and I decide to get rid of the anti-air. Now, my black boat... It could reach this port where I can pick up more infantry, and I do want to ferry more infantry. But I was concerned of a power that could potentially, maybe, force me to pay with my funds to heal it up. So I, d I leave it off port for now. I move myself and hide it. And I move my artillery and aim it at the battleship. So, I do get rid of an anti-air in the process. And if he shoots at my battleship, I got a nice shot with my uh, artillery. His, 
his uh, fighter can shoot my fighter, but uh, I would just heal my fighter back up. And I'm leaving my vehicles not in the front, but in the back where I can cover. Oh yeah, this is going on YouTube, of course it is. Uh, welcome to the stream. Let me know if you have any insights around here. I picked Andy because I wanted to practice Andy versus Drake, and I assumed my opponent would pick Drake. And I built my dirt fighter. This fighter is probably useless, to be honest, but I just really wanted to make sure nothing is going to take down my stealth. Alright, at this point I captured both comp towers, so even though I am now behind 6k in income, I still think I have the advantage because his fighters can't one-shot my bombers and I can just heal my bomber back up. Alright, he's stopping me from capturing the properties back, so he maintains his income advantage. And this is why I keep infantry just hiding here, so I can see what's up. I see what's happening. His Neo tank walk into this forest. I don't exactly know why this forest specifically, but it's there. And he sends his fighter left. And... He puts it just out of range of my fighter. Alright, just uh... Alright, I'm capturing some properties, closing the income gap a little. Uh, pick off his infantry, get a nice amazing shot on that battleship, and then pull my medium tank back because I don't want it to get shot. I moved it in this position where the battleship can't shoot it and my medium tank can uh, completely interrupt this capture, this uh, comm tower capture next turn. Or I could just use an artillery, that also works. But I spot the neo tank and I decided, you know, these battlecopters are running out of fuel. This one has 17, this one only has not 20. I'm sending them in. Who cares if they get shot down by the fighter? They, these two battlecopters already, the two of them already took down a medium tank and they're gonna earn their value way more. Like, they shot at an artillery, they, sh they completely killed off a medium tank, they're going to get more shots on this neo tank. These two battlecopters have already earned themselves over. So, get a shot, get another shot, and I considered resupplying them with my APC, but I didn't want to lose my APC, so I just decided to re resupply the tanks instead. Uh, I also decided that the fighter was probably going to take down my battlecopters anyway, but, they, but look at them, they're low on fuel, that's to be expected, I'm playing against Drake, but they're also low on ammo now. So move my fighter up here, so if his fighter comes in, I can shoot his fighter. Uh, no, I wouldn't be too worried about it. I mean, I have a bomber and a stealth, so I wouldn't, like, I'm pretty much hard countering heavy tanks right now with my air units, and Trey can't really compete because he, he has weak air units. I mean, like I said, I have three fighters, there's no way he's going to gain air superiority. And uh, I decided not to build anything too expensive. I mean, I will have to uh, pay for repairs next turn because he's using his superpower. Like, as much as I don't want these buildings to heal my units because I can heal it back for free, the turn starts off with me paying to heal my units. Alright, so here's the Typhoon. It's mostly fine, I could just heal it back up during my superpower. He captures one property back, I'm now once again 6k behind in income. I don't know why he moved his battleship over, but it's probably because there's nothing, he thinks that there's nothing to shoot left over here. And he would be right since I retreated out of his range. He shoots down my battle copter, I'm fine with that. And he uses his neo tank against the battle copter. 
a medium tank, I guess, my bad. <laughs> I found this exchange hilarious because he's using very expensive units to do very little damage to a dying battlecopter. That's probably... Uh, let me see how much fuel it had left. It actually has no ammo and only 10 fuel left, so that is actually hilarious. That has been a good battlecopter. Not as great as the transport copter from my other game, but uh, a good battle copter nonetheless. Alright, so let's hurry this up to my turn. And... Yeah, it, it might even die from an infantry. So here's the hyper upgrade. Now, first things first, before you do anything, of course you get vision, because vision is worse, like... The rain makes all vision minus one, so I move my recon in this forest, spot the, bat the battleship, and I immediately bomb it. So let's see, what did this battleship do all game? It moved up, it shot at my artillery once, and then it moved back, and it's already at 1 HP. So this uh, 28,000 funds investment, didn't even, which didn't even kill this artillery, it effectively only contributed to 4 HP because I just healed it back up. So, this battleship only ever contributed 4 HP of damage to my one artillery over here. And this is why this is why I don't like battleships, like especially if there are air units. If there are no air units, battleships are actually uh, sometimes you might even need it. But because there are air units, battleships just get uh, wiped out by the bombers which cost much less than a battleship. So, I start capturing these properties. He can't do anything because all his units are up here. And I move forward so I could uh, just make sure I stay in control of the air. So, his fighter can't do anything against my bomber now. My stealth, which only has 8 fuel left, stealths run out of fuel extremely fast. I use the black boat to resupply it. And I just leave my tanks in the forest to provide me vision. Like, these light tanks aren't going to hold against his heavy tanks here, but that's why I have my, uh, my air units. I typically don't build many heavy tanks myself, but I do... I mean, mostly because they can be countered by battlecopter spam and uh, maybe one bomber. But I do recognize sometimes I, ha I do have to use it just to take out anti-air. Alright, so I shot at this infantry, and I didn't know he, what else he had here, so I just uh, kept my units nearby, put it in the city here where it can resupply because it's running out of fuel, and I built a second bomber. And here, my opponent shot at my, ant, my artillery, it survived, so it will come back when I get my next power. This tank will probably come back. He's not killing any of my units, necessarily. His battleship didn't do any damage to this infantry. He does shoot it with uh, his tank, but artillery here aiming at that, tank here aiming at that. And he just resigns. So. That's to be expected. Even if he he was up in income pretty much the whole game. Let's we can uh turn on the stats. Let's take a look at the his stats and look at my stats. He has generated forty five like uh about thirty thousand more income than me. Forty thousand more income than me. About that much. And we can see that. We've done about the same amount of damage to each other, but I suppose it's simply because of army composition, where he knows he can't actually win the air war, and his heavy his heavy tanks are just going to get blown up by my bombers. So I guess that's why. I am 10 units ahead, but it is his turn, so he can build a maximum of 4 units, so that would put him only, like on average, 8 units behind, if we keep going turn by turn. But that was this game. Uh, yeah, that was this game. Andy against Drake. 
Some of you may recognize this person as one of my opponents in the Egg Cup, but it was nice seeing him again in the Global League.